Hi everyone, I'm Fred Womble, the servant leader for the Deacon Team Ministry here at First Missionary Baptist Church. And we'd love to hear how God is using our ministry in your lives. So if you have any questions about the sermon or just questions in general, feel free to contact us at info at fmbc-concord.org. Here at FNBC, our mission is to lead all people into a life-changing and ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, thanks for joining us. Okay, so we're, we're in chapter 17, and uh, our, our prophets in this chapter are two. There's Ezekiel and there's Jeremiah. Now, remember I told you you need to have your Bibles with you as well, right? Do y'all remember what we learned on last week? Yeah, we said, uh, we talked about when things look right, that are wrong, and when things look wrong, that are right. Do y'all remember that? Did anybody have that kind of week where this week, did y'all do that? Did you look at things uh, and you saw that they were wrong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So now, if you got, as I said, if you got your book of story, open it up to chapter 17. And if you don't, you can stop out at the hub and get one after worship. Uh, we do encourage everyone to come out to one of our growth groups. We have them on Sunday at 930. Anybody can go. Uh, and then at 1115, uh, we don't have one, but just, you know, yeah, at 930. But then you can come and worship at 1115. Then on Wednesdays, 12 noon, uh, anybody can come right out here in the lobby area. And then on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. And I know uh, we sort of split you up last week, but we're back on schedule. Uh, everybody here on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. dinner, a uh, home-cooked meal. And then we start our small groups, our growth groups at 7 p.m. Now, watch this now. Last week, we looked at a king... Um, and the northern kingdom. Y'all remember that? We had two kingdoms. I'm going to have to put my glasses on. I was trying to be cool about it. But that ain't going to work for you. All right. Do y'all remember last week we had a king that was really, really good and really, really bad? All right. We had a good king. His name was what? Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. And Hezekiah did what God told him to do. And we learned that uh, on wicked kings, though, that there was a wicked king no, named Hoshea, and he didn't do what God called him to do. He was in the northern kingdom, and Hezekiah was in the southern kingdom. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. It's just a little review now. And we learned that. What's the cheapest education you can get? To learn from somebody else. Learn from somebody else's experiences. And so we want to learn from someone else's experiences. And Hezekiah was a good king. Hoshea was a bad king. And Hoshea didn't do what was right. And the northern kingdom was swept away by the Assyrian army. And so the northern kingdom no longer exists. Now, by the time we get to chapter 17 today, about 100 years has passed since last week. And what we want to look at this week is the decline of the southern kingdom, as sad as it is going to be. And what you see here, I, I really got you, we're going to walk through this, uh, and I think I got a little extra time to do some teaching this morning, uh, but in your Bibles, you want to look at 2 Kings, the 21st chapter, through the 25th chapter. I'm going to cover that in about two or three pages in the book, The Story, which you'll be on page 231. Are y'all with me that far? Now watch this. Uh, you remember I talked about seeing reoccurring phrases, how you need to look at those because it means something and it has some value. You all you remember me telling you that? You need to look at those reoccurring phrases. Well, look on page 231, and the first one you see is that a young boy by the name of Manasseh uh, was 12 years old when he became king. How many of you got any knowing 12-year-olds? How many of you let them be king? I mean, how about you just let them run your house? No. What? <laughs> well, see, this shows you how a monarchy works. It wasn't about uh, your age. It's just that he was that bloodline. And so he was 12 years old when he became king, and he ruled for 55 years. Now, now the sad part about it, drop down to that very next paragraph. Look what it says he did. He did evil in the eyes of the government, nope. no. of his employer. Now, this is 2 Kings 20, uh, ch uh, chapter 21. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, now he, he did.
did some really bad stuff. Drop down uh, about, about three or four lines from the bottom of the paragraph, and look what he said he did. He sacrificed his son in the fire. How many of you sacrificed your children in fire? Raise your hand. None of you? A little sidebar, you're doing it right now if you're not raising them in the name of the Lord. Did you hear what I just said? Because the ultimate end for them will be fire. All right? Okay. Now, look what he did. Though. He sacrificed his own son in the fire. He practiced div divination. Uh, he sought omens. He consulted mediums and the spiritists. In other words, he, he, what's that lady's name? The Long Island medium? Y'all seen her on TV. You know, folks that can tell you about your future. How many of you could know the future would want to know it? You, you, can, you can raise your hand. You wouldn't want to know it? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. There's a few of you that would want to know it. Yeah, if you could know it. But then after you find out what it is, then you say, I wish I didn't know that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that what you would do? But check this out. Now, he did all of this kind of stuff. Look what it says next. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now, he's one of the very few that they just kept repeating over and over the amount of evil that he did. In fact, if you flip over to page 232, and, and look at that uh, next paragraph where it says, the Lord said, do you see that? Through his servants, the prophets, meaning more than one, Manasseh, king of Judah, had committed these detestable things. Look what it says again. He has done more evil than Amorites who preceded him and has led Judah. Now, in other words, he's saying that not only did he do evil in his country, but he did more evil than the evil folks were doing evil. That's bad, isn't it? Pretty bad. Yep. I mean, he was doing corrupt stuff uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, and why do I say that? Because he was sitting in God's chair. Now, back up one paragraph and look what it says there now that he was supposed to do the right thing. Look what God said. God had promised them that he was going to protect them. He had put his name in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And because his name was in Jerusalem, they knew that could nothing come against them because God was going to protect them. How many of you want God's protection? Amen. Do you want his protection? You want his name to be in your house, right? You want his name to be over your house. You know, how many of you got security systems? How many got guns? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Sister. <laughs> she might be packing now. The sweetest little old lady you would ever meet. She, that's why she's sweet. She packing. <laughs> I can't look at her the same again. <laughs> no wonder Brother Gibber don't give you no trouble. We have all of those security systems, but the best security system you can have right. is for what? For your God yes. to have his name in your house. Now, look what he says here. Still at the top of page 232. He says, I gave their answer. Well, I said, I will not again make the feet of the Israelites wander from the land I gave them. But underline this, the biggest word in the dictionary. You see that biggest word? What is it? If, that's the biggest word in the dictionary. That's the biggest word in your vocabulary. It's always a conditioner. If, mm -hmm. only they will be oh, oh, careful to do everything I commanded them, and I will keep the whole law that my, and, and will keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them. Now look at that next phrase, underline that. But the people did not listen. Do you see that? Yeah. When a society, when a people who are called to be God's people stop listening to God and start listening to CNN and in right. NBC, what is it, in MSNBC and uh, Fox News, right. Come on. walk with me now, drop down a little bit further. And so where to, you see where it says, Moreover, Manasseh also shed much innocent blood. Look what it says at the very end. So that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people. Listen, see that next sentence? Mm -hmm. But they paid no attention.
that's a bad place to be, y'all, when we stop listening to God. Are y'all with me here? I'm still on page 232 at the very bottom of that, that last paragraph where it says, the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but the people paid no attention. It's like my preaching all day long and every week, week in and week out, and I'm telling you all the stuff that God said. Y'all say, okay, Pastor, you go back home and keep doing what you're doing. It didn't say they weren't coming to church. It didn't say they weren't worshiping. It just says they weren't paying them any attention. Right. Oh, y'all want me to stick to the text? Y'all don't want me to get out there. No, no, no. Pastor, don't be getting up in our business. <laughs> now, go to page 233. Ammon, which was Manasseh's son, was 22 years old when he became king. He reigned for two years, and guess what? He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. You, you see this? What we're looking at is the decline of the kingdom. Walk, go, go on down a little bit further. Go past the italics. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king. Look what it says he did. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Flip on over to page 234. Jehoiakim was 18. When he became king, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. King got the king, got the king, got the king, got the king. Now, there was one good king in that period. His name was Josiah. But after that, the rest of them did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, here's the thing. A lot of us, when we look at how we live our daily lives, we don't call it evil because nobody else calls it evil. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. But evil is based on what God calls evil. Some of the things, I could probably go down a laundry list of things that you think is okay, but God says is evil. We call them affairs. God calls it adultery. He says that's evil. We call it perks at work. Taking stuff that don't belong to you. I, they, they owe me that. The Bible calls that stealing. That is wrong. Situational amnesia. That's lying. Are y'all listening to me? In our society, we give them colorful names so we don't have to look at our mess. Okay? And and he wasn't talking about folks out there. Yeah. These are God's people. Now, here's the problem. God brought them into the promised land. He gave them a land that was what? Flowing, Flowing with milk and honey. And he planted them there so that they could be a representation of him. Mm -hmm. So when we aren't representing God like God is supposed to be represented, we are misrepresenting who he is and what he looks like. And so we are confusing people when we're living like the rest of the world and we look like the rest of the world. We can't point them to God because we they look like we don't even know which way to go. Mm, all right. I, I, thank you, Fred. I, you're the only one I, I know. Thank you, likes and Fred. Thank you, likes and Fred. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, so, so this kind of lifestyle has gone on and on and on. And so God now is telling him he's going to wipe them all out. And don't we really, you know how we knock God when we hear that he's going to kill men, women, boys and girls and babies? That just seems evil and bad, doesn't it? When, 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 when instant children just die, that doesn't seem right, does it? That seems like God is just mean and, and that how can a God so good allow something so bad to happen? But I need you to flip if you got your, uh, your book, the story, flip over to page 43. Flip all the way back. See how far we have come uh, on page 43. Uh, now, that was when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. I want you to look at your timeline down at the very bottom. You see that? You see where it says 1,446? Mm -hmm. I, I told you I just want to teach just, just a little bit this morning. You need to see this. You see that? Now flip back over to your lesson on page 231. Are you 
with me? Yeah. Now, I know y'all not going to get this one real easy. And you see that 586? Yeah. All right? That's how long God has been patient. Wow. That's over 800 years. How long, how long does it take you to get tired of telling somebody something over and over and over again? 30 seconds. First or second time? And got on your last nerve, Donna. Look, she's she shaking her head hard. You remember your mama talking about that last nerve? Yeah, so it was what, about two, three, maybe four times? Oh, this sister right here said one time. <laughs> she raised that in one time. It, you were done one time. God has been telling them over and over and over. For 800 years, God has been kind and gracious and loving and still providing for them. Uh, watch this now. Allowing them to live in his house. Allowing them to eat his food. Allowing him, us to wear his clothes. How long they get to stay in your house living like that? Not long. Two days, right? We got a two-day limit over here. We got a one-time limit over here. But God did it for 800 plus years. Wow. Would you call that compassion? Yeah. Would you call that kind? Yeah. Long suffering. Why? Because God doesn't want to do what he says he's going to do, but God is just and righteous, so he can't go against who he is. He can't stop being God. But he can give us leeway because he's not trapped by time, right? So he can give us time to get it together, but after a while he says, enough! It's enough. It's enough. And so now Ezekiel and, and, and uh, Jeremiah come on the scene and these brothers had a rough job preaching to a crowd like this. I mean, preaching to <laughs> And they weren't listening to him. They were coming in and out. I mean, they, they were hearing him, you know, they were hearing him, but them, but they weren't going back making any adjustments in their lifestyles. They just kept doing them. This gets uglier. Turn to page 242 now. And this, is, this gets us to, 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 to where I want to spend a little time. That's just some background there to, 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 so, so you won't leave here mad at God. Because sometimes when we see what God does, we, we, we sometimes then have a hard time even promoting him or, or, or being able to say that that was okay or that was right. Uh, but, but at the top of page 42, you see where it says the word came to Jeremiah? Now, Jeremiah, uh, like I said, he had a rough job. God called him out of his mother's womb. You can write this one down. Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse number five. But Jeremiah didn't want the job. Remember that job I was telling y'all about? Jeremiah was like you all. He didn't want it. No, because that would become depressing, wouldn't it? Yeah. To keep telling folks over and over and over again and, and not getting any results. That would become depressing in 40 years. Jeremiah said, no, I don't want it. God says, no, you got it. He said, well, I'm too young. God says, you're not. No, I'm going to be with you. Hmm. Y'all just remember that phrase. If God's going to be with you, it doesn't matter about the rest. All right. Yeah. Are y'all walking with me? So, so we see the decline that happened. Uh, but, but Jeremiah has got to give this bad news over and over and over again. And he became very unpopular in his country and in his city and in his neighborhood. News flash. This one isn't going to come up, but here's a little life advice for you. It is God isn't looking for popular. He's looking for faithful. All right. You might want to write that one down. God isn't looking for popular. He's looking for faithful. He, he's looking for those who will take him at his word when the rest of the world is going against what thus saith the Lord. It's a hard job being a pastor telling folks, and I'm being honest with you, over and over what's right. And they say, I know, pastor, but they keep doing wrong. All right. But they wonder why things don't get better. Walk, walk with me now. So, so in this, in starting where I said, where the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord when King uh, Zedekiah. Now watch this. His name is, and the reason I had to Paul, I, I, his name means uh, Yahweh saves. Now, y'all remember how uh, we name our kids, right? We find a Robitussin bottle. Ryo film. Oh, I like that. Yeah. But, but, but 
in the Hebrew, they gave you a name that meant something. And Zedekiah meant Yahweh saves. Now, check this out. Uh, the, the, the Assyrians are now off the scene. They're now the Babylonians. And the Babylonians were just as heinous a people as the Assyrians were. And, and, and this man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar has started exporting people. It's just like he came in here and took a whole bunch of people and took them to Babylon. And so he sent word to Zedekiah because he had stopped paying the bully tax. You remember me talking about that? He didn't want to pay the tax anymore. And again, he wants to side with Egypt. And because he wants to side with Egypt, he says, I don't have to pay you anymore. So the Assyrians are going to come, I mean, the Babylonians are going to come in and wipe them out. And guess what he did? He went, he sent a delegation to Jeremiah. This just, just blew my mind. This is what y'all, this just sounds like modern day stuff. Sent word to the preacher and say, tell the preacher to pray for me. <laughs> that the Babylonians won't come against me. Yeah. I, I know I've been doing wrong, but you know, I'm a child of God. Don't we believe that? I'm a child of the king. You know, and, and they've seen God do great things before, right? They've seen God do miraculous things. And so, in other words, say, tell God to do some of that stuff he's done before. We, we know he can do it. Y'all ever pray like that? Y'all know God can do it. How many of you know God can do it? Yeah, so you be praying for God to do it, right? Yeah, but here now, here he is now. God's going to give them a decree, and he tells, this is just crazy stuff. I, it, like I tell you, you don't have to watch TV. It's just crazy. He sends word to say, look what he says. Look, look what he says. Inquire now to the Lord for us, because Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, is attacking us. Perhaps the Lord will perform wonders for us as in times past, so that he will withdraw from us, meaning so that Nebuchadnezzar will withdraw. He's saying, you know, we know God can do it, so let's go ahead on and pray. And see, a lot of times we're asking God to deliver us and, and praying for God to deliver us, and when he does it, we get mad at God. How many of you ever got mad at God because he didn't do what you wanted to do? Yeah. He didn't deliver what you wanted him to deliver, and, and, and he's saying, he, and they, they Jeremiah said, boy, you just might as well forget it. I'm going to give you the short version. Y'all going to get your butt kicked. The Babylonians are coming in here. They're going to wipe you out. They're going to tear up your town. They're going to tear up the temple. They're going to take your children. They're going to take your wives. You're not going to be able to fight against them because God's going to be on their side. Now, check this out. This blew their mind because God says he's going to put his name in Jerusalem. And he's going to let these bad people come in here and take us out. Nah, that ain't going to happen. There's a country called the United States of America. They don't believe it's going to happen. Mm, all right. We think we safe because we got water on all sides. You know that water can flood a whole country. You ever thought about that? Yet the enemy may not come across on ships. But God all he has to do is raise the water about six feet. It just wipes us all out. Are y'all listening to this? So sometimes we can become so comfortable in our relationship with God that we figure we can do anything that we want. And so Jeremiah says, nope, God isn't on your side. This is what he tells Nebuchadnezzar. Now drop down uh, to where it says furthermore. That's where I want to spend a little more time. He's furthermore. He says, tell the people. See, he told this to Zedekiah, right, that this is what God's going to do. Now he says, tell the people. In other words, I don't want the people to not know uh, what's going to happen. He says, this is what the Lord says. I, see, I will show you the way of life and the way of death. How many want to know the way of life? How many want to know the way of death? You should want to know the way of death because then it tells you don't go that way. <laughs> Looking for, no, I don't want to know that way. No, no. This is what he says. He says, I'm going to show you the way. He says, I'm setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Now, 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 watch this. This, this. this is some life advice here. Remember, I told you that God is a kind and compassionate God, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? Even right now, when he tells them he's going to take them into Babylon, he tells them right now, here's what I'm going to do. If you stay here, mm -hmm. you're going to die. If you go into Babylon, you're going to live. Now, that just doesn't look right, does it? I just told you how heinous of people the Babylonians are, right? Yeah. But look here. There's always compassion on the other side of God's chastisement. Guess what? God always provides a way of escape. Write this passage down. 1 Corinthians 
the 10th chapter, verse 13. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, if you got your Bibles, turn there. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, no, chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. Listen to this. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Even when God knows you are in trouble, he's saying that if you will come to him, God is always going to provide a way out. And so go back to our lesson text. So here it is now. He's telling the children of, of, of Israel, he says, I'm going to bring the Syrian, I mean the Babylonians in here to wipe you out. But if you listen to me, Y'all didn't catch me. He's again saying, I know right looks wrong and wrong looks right. It's another case. God's ways aren't our ways. God's thoughts aren't our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. So a lot of times when we're trying to figure God out, we're messing up because we're using our natural mind and figure this is the way we ought to do it. And God says, no, it's this way. And because that way doesn't look right, we go the wrong way. He says, but I always set before you the way of life and the way of death. Are y'all looking at this? He gives them a choice. Guess what God does to you every day? He gives you a choice. Every day, every decision you make, you're either making a decision for the way of life or the way of death. Now, for some, it might be slow, but slow death is still, it's still there. yeah. Are, are y'all looking at this? Your kingdom, just like this kingdom, it will fall. It will come down. I wish I heard some, I had somebody hearing me today. Because some of our lives are in shambles right now. And we're praying to God like Zedekiah to, for God to deliver us like he has before. In other words, we want him to be a Disney dad. Y'all know what those are. Just give us what we want to make us feel good. He's been doing it for 800 years. This is painful, y'all. Because as I say, as I sit here and read this, I see so much of what's happening in our own country today. When you have bad leadership, you have bad fellowship. Say that. Say that. Unless, unless we follow the Lord. I need to back up a minute of this show you something here. Go back to page 232. And drop down to that paragraph where it says the Lord said through his servant, the prophet Manasseh. You see a sentence there. He says, they will be looted and plundered by all their enemies. They have done evil in my eyes and have aroused my anger from the day their ancestors came out of Egypt until today. God's patience has run out. It's only a matter of time before it runs out again. Go back to page 242. At the 
very bottom. We start looking at the destruction of the kingdom. It says, then the city would be broken through and the whole army fled at night through the gate between two walls near the king's garden. And you go on and you read that. And God told Zedekiah that he was going to go into Babylon, but he wasn't going to get to see it. He didn't understand what God meant. His sons got killed right before his very eyes. And then the king gouged out his eyes. So he went into Babylon, but he never got to see it. How many of us are spiritually blind? And we're walking right in to the enemy's camp. And we don't even see it. But God told him, if you go there, you live. But if you stay in the state where you are, you will die. That's one of those hard messages. There's no way to spin it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you just want a good spin on something. Mm-hmm. This way you live, this way you die. So my question for you this morning, are we going to be like the people in Jeremiah's day where you hear God's call? And he says, this is the way you live. And this is the way you die. Nearly 2,000 years ago, God provided a way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. He says, I came to give you life and life abundantly. Any other way leads to death. But there's a key thing there. He's just not talking about a mental ascent that you know who he is. He's talking about a transformed heart. Are you going to live like the king of kings and the Lord of lords? Start looking at your life and see if you got it in order. I wouldn't doubt everybody in here loves the Lord. But I would doubt if he was truly first and only in many of our lives. How do I know? Trust me. I know. But because God is a compassionate God and a loving God, he's a God of a second chance third chance, fourth chance. Anybody need a fifth chance? How about just a do-over, Lord? Lord, just do me over right now, Lord. Because I one day want to hear, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. He didn't say popular. I, did you hear what I just said? I, I, I may not have many friends on this side. Right. I may not have many folks that'll follow me. Right. But when I stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, I want to hear him say, Herb, well done. Anybody else want to hear him say, well done? Will you stand on your feet if you just want to hear him say, well done? It's not hard. He says, this is the way of life and this is the way of death. He says, I put it right before you day after day after day. And that made me going home and changes the things that you're doing. That you, When you read his word, he says, listen to my word and follow me. Follow him. Follow him. And I don't care what state of happiness you think you have. If you're not living in his will, I call it the little closet. 
you're not getting near the blessings that he has in store for you. If you just walk with him and follow him in every area of your life. If you would bow your heads with me. Hi, my name is Herb Redrick. I'm the lead pastor here at First Missionary Baptist Church. I pray that God's word touched your heart today because our mission is to lead all people into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Christ. If you have a question about the ministries or the message, please contact us at admin at fmbc-concord.org. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.